They tell you when one door closes, another opens. But what if you can't say goodbye to the past? Because it's always staring back at you. Haunting you. I would like to speak with Olivia alone. You do not get to make requests after breaking our agreement, knocking on my door, threatening to wake my family. You do not get to see my daughter. Not tonight, not ever. You must believe me, I am not here to exhume our past. I am here to put it to rest. Why come at all? Because I have cancer. He's in medical school now. Can you believe it? My son, the doctor. You must realize how dire things are for me to be on your doorstep. I have little time left, and even less of the inheritance Garland left me. All lost in the crash. And when I'm gone, Christopher will have nowhere to go. No means to finish his schooling. No other family to support him. I gave you my daughter, not by choice. Tonight, I am asking you to take my son. I had followed my instincts, but that had led straight to Mal's death. Olivia, please. And so it began. For one dark year, I pushed back against my instincts. This is Malcolm's decision to make. And learn to follow Malcolm's instead. Nothing will be free for him here. You will have to work for his education. But I don't need a tutor, Daddy. I just want to go back to school and see my friends. Sit. I became an observer in my own home. None of this goddamn piano music. You know what I want for Christmas? Silence. I told myself that I did it for the safety of my children. In here, day in, day out. Alicia has died. I thought that as long as I obeyed Malcolm. What well, do you think Christopher would like this picture of his parents? One thing could remain certain, that what happened to Mal would never happen again in my home. Mother, I thought perhaps I could ride my horse into town this afternoon. If this is about your debutante ball dress, I already have appointments set for seamstresses to come to the house next week. Then shouldn't I know what the latest fashions are before they arrive? <sighs> you can't keep me locked up in this house forever. It's up to your father. Daddy, with my debutante ball coming up, I really need to have the best dress, don't you think? Well, only the best for my daughter on the night she introduces herself to Virginia society. So maybe you could give me the key to the swan room and I could have a look through grandmother's old things for some inspiration. Uh, why don't you visit the shops in town instead? I don't know, Daddy. It just doesn't sound very fun to go all the way there and look at all those tantalizing things and not have any means to bring any of them home. Well, what is to be done about that, hmm? No, 
though, for a bit and take me. Wouldn't that be a gift to us all? friendships from school since no one writes anymore. When they show up to my ball, if they even do, I'll be a complete stranger. How am I going to have any fun? Well, hopefully this Christopher fellow coming to stay will make father let up. It's easy for you to see the positives. They actually let you leave for school and get away with a life full of secret dalliances while I'm stuck at home listening to the world on the radio. No, that's just because since Mal died, well, Father's the only one making decisions these days, and he doesn't give a fig what happens to me. And it's dalliance. Singular. You're cruel. Why won't you tell me about her? This is more fun. <laughs> Just to tell me this. Is it because I know her? You can keep trying, but you're not getting anything out of me. Mrs. Snyder, good afternoon. Why, Mr. Joel Foxworth, all grown up and pretty as a peacock. If you'll excuse me, some of us don't have time to dawdle in the streets contributing absolutely nothing to the workforce. A bucket and a mob full of joy. She used to be our housekeeper, Mrs. Steiner. Well, the Friday before you were born. Mala was telling me how much she hated her. Mm, I can't imagine why. Do you want to come with me and help pick out a dress? Tempting, but I have my own job to do. Oh, Miss Foxworth, your stockings. Oh, just another thing falling apart in my world. Do you have any for purchase? Well, only paint on. Looking for something. Not anymore. Sir, I'm helping the young lady. That's quite all right. The top button seems to have caught as I was unloading my luggage on the train. Normally, I wouldn't mind being one button short, but uh, first impressions being what they are. If the lady will allow, I can mend it in just a moment. Go right ahead. And take your time. Seem to have stumbled upon each other and indisposed, miss. And... Ex... Of mine. Deal. Those were my last silk pair. Were? They ripped. I guess I am to become one of the many women parading about town with painted seams on the back of their bare legs. Unladylike. And uncomfortable. Well, I may not be able to soothe the issue of comfort, but I can assure you that no gentleman will be staring at your legs. So you're saying you're no gentleman? Watch out. I might keep you to that. <laughs>
you are. I have a present for you. So you know what time it is to come and see me. But I like listening for your music. It reminds me of when Nelly used to sing to me at night. You can still listen. With a very handsome watch on your arm. You sure this isn't just some way to hold me over longer? You know my father. There's no way I'm getting my trust till I turn 25. I don't need some rich man's fault you making me wait to go see the world. I'll go out and grab myself. Okay. Where is it you truly want to go? North. <laughs> what does that mean? New York? Chicago? Nova Scotia? I can't just traipse the globe without any direction. I'll be happy anywhere without automobiles to work on. Anywhere I can make my own decisions. It's anywhere by here. Traveling costs money. You can take our jobs. And you can always play your music for money. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs music. Can't take my piano with me. There's plenty of places got pianos, and you're plenty pretty to get a job playing on there. Aren't you kind? told you all that piano playing would make him soft. What are you talking about? I found that Negro garage boy doing improper things to your son. Oh my God, is he hurt? Worse, he was enjoying it. I'll talk to him. I will take care of him. You've already done enough. How do you explain this spiffy little piece on his wrist, then? Mrs. Foxworth, you know why Harry would never steal from anyone. She can speak to his character. Please. I don't think we know this boy well enough to speak to his character. Oh, come on! Samuel, don't! Mrs. Foxworth, please! I, don't, I didn't do anything! It was Harry! Stop moving! No, no, no! no.
Does anyone want to tell me what really happened last night? Drop it, Kern. Hit it here. Mr. and Mrs. Foxworth, your guest has arrived. Mm. Christopher. Welcome back to Foxworth Hall. Corinne, Joel, I'd like you to meet your Uncle Christopher. Pleasure to finally meet you, Uncle Christopher. Uh, yes. Pleasure. Christopher, we're delighted to have you here. Isn't that right? Yes, right. Please excuse Joel's silence. He often plays the piano too late into the night and tires himself. He's a very dedicated musician. Piano, it's something I've always wanted to learn. Actually, you already know how, or you did. I taught you, along with both of the boys, ages ago. <laughs> well, now, turn my fingers to the keys. Piano's not a bicycle. I'm so grateful that you're allowing me to stay here with you. Your charity and providing me a home, well, I, I can't thank you enough. Is that what you think this is? Charity? Malcolm. Of course not. I hope you are prepared to work in exchange for your tuition. That is the arrangement as I've understood it. And I am more than happy to serve your office in any way it requires. You will not be working in the office. You will be helping out with the yard work here at Foxworth Hall. <laughs> I'd be happy to, sir. Daddy, surely you can't expect him to work alongside Nella's family and the rest of the servants. What's wrong with him working alongside Nella's family? Joel? You know, Mother, you were right. I didn't get much rest last night. Excuse me. It's for the best. I'm late for work. Corinne, darling, why don't you show your uncle to his room? I, um, haven't quite finished my breakfast yet. I can surely find it myself. Come, I'll show you. Rock, you're speaking. Rock, it's Corinne Foxworth. And to what do I owe the pleasure? How do you feel about sneaking out this afternoon? I must say, I, I did not expect this house to be quite what it is, or for you to be who you are. Oh, did your mother tell you very much about her time here? Almost nothing at all. <laughs> is the piano the only instrument I can play? <laughs> believe you're allowing this. This isn't the place. You have to know what the police will do to a black man they think stole from a white man like father. Keep your voice down. How can I when Harry could be dead? You saw what they did to him in full view on our own front lawn. Just imagine what they're doing to him in jail. We have to do something. This wasn't Harry's fault. It's something we came to together, willingly. It's what we both want. Where are you? Someone you love is pleading with you that someone they love is hurting. You won't do anything. Love? This isn't up to me, it's up to your father. 
for giving me a way out the house. That was the most exciting afternoon I've had in weeks. Yeah, no, movies always make me feel better. Except when you make me wait through the whole thing. I guess um, first year of business school doesn't teach patience. <laughs> patience, no. Persistence, yes. I really do have to go. I've been away for too long. Well, glad you called me up, Corinne. See you soon. Corinne, what you doing? It is none of your business. But will you please, please not mention that you saw me to either of my parents? As long as you tell me where you were. Why do you care? Just concerned for my niece. Oh, so my father has you working already. Who am I to reject the call of my new vocation? It does look as though you'll be needing to pay another visit to the seamstress. <laughs> <laughs> hey, careful who you're laughing at. See, I was just about to tell you that your father's still at the office and your mother is getting her dress fitted. So if you were looking for a way to sneak in, you might drive through the kitchen. But now maybe I won't tell you that. Thank you. May I ask who this is regarding? And Curtis, make it the most effective treatment available. to do something about Harry? We are. Good. I'll come with you to the station and you can drop the charges against him immediately. You will be leaving to spend some time at a professional facility in Westmoreland. Now, you will say nothing to your sister about this. You will pack one bag. Now, I will take you tonight after dark so nobody sees us. Now, the professionals there will Get it out of you, and you will recover. And then you will return. And we will never speak of this again. What if I don't want to go? That is not your decision to make. It's my life. It is my name. <sighs> and you're on board with this? When are you going to tell me what you want? I am aligned with your father. Mary. I know your father's plan seems extreme. Your plan. It's your plan, too. You agreed to it. If you go get it fixed, then your father wouldn't hurt you. It's a little late for that. Thank you for doing this. I'm not doing this for you. The least you could do is give this to Harry for me. glass of water because it's just so hot yes it is exceptionally hot well um <laughs> good night 
That's not my room. I'll just go to my actual room. Mm. Which uh, is apparently right next. How did you sleep last night? I was a bit Not restless. Really of course. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's okay. I slept just fine. Thank you for asking. <clears throat> Where's Joel? He left for Montreal. What? Montreal? He received a telegram yesterday inviting him to study with a top musician there, but he had to leave right away in order to accept. This is ridiculous. Why wouldn't he tell me? Who's the musician? A composer at the Philharmonic there. He was really very torn about it. He didn't want to upset you that he'd be gone for the summer. He's not going to be back in time for my ball. But he was supposed to be my first dance. Your ball will be just as good without him. Maybe better. to see your home. I stopped reading when I realized what they were. Oh, it's all right. I know you must be hurting. I just want to know where he is. Did he tell you? about a place called Westmoreland Sanatorium? Some physicians call Westmoreland experimental, but experimental is too kind of a word for a place like that. What's happened? 
Over here, if you'd be so kind. Mrs. Foxworth, do you have a moment? We need to speak to you. It's important. I know about Joel and Harry. You may leave. Just what are you both imagining? Forget imagination. Verify. They have consequences. The approach they're known for uses shocks of electricity in patients' brains for every condition you can imagine, from nervousness to venereal disease to homo... homosexuality. But it doesn't work. Mother, please. Joel needs you. I might have been mourning Mal, but I had closed the door on my Joel because I couldn't face what was inside. But it was seeing him there, what was left of him. I remembered who I was. <laughs> His provider. His protector. Ma'am? His parent. What are you doing? Getting my son out of this place. Only your husband can sign him out. My husband doesn't need to know anything about this. I am his mother, and I'm taking him home. Why do you think they're taking so long? Everything's gonna be all right. If that place is what I think it is, as soon as your mother sees Jewel, she'll know exactly what to do. It's Joel. He's sick. I can't take care of him in the house. Awful big house, though. I know how heavy this is for me to show up like this. You don't know the first thing about heavy. I should have done more than I did. I wasn't myself, but I'm working on finding that person again, and right now that person is here at your door asking for your help. I just want us all to sleep better tonight. You want us to help your boy? What work did you do to help ours? She got him back for us. Beaten bad. Alive. No, I didn't. I was too much of a coward. That was Joel. Joel brought your son back to you, so... If you won't do this for me, won't you do it for him? Where's your boy? He's laid out in the car. I need a hand. Malcolm. You can never know. Has anyone heard from Joel? I'd just like to make sure he arrived in Montreal, safely. I'm sure he has. Isn't that right, Malcolm? I should get to work. 
As should I. If you can't keep this a secret, he was barely conscious. He needs to be in our home with a real nurse or in a hospital. Do you want your father to put him through a window? You let this happen. You lied to me to protect you. You have no idea what's gone on in this house, what I've done to shield you. I have never asked to be shielded. What have you ever... rain down on our home. You, head out to the lake. Let's get on with it. No one rests until we find our career. Some we had already imagined. we had hidden from view. And others we couldn't even dream of. They would come to haunt us later. was only silence. My own. I need to look at the wound, but we're too far out. We need to find shelter. There's a chapel. Just down that trail. Okay. Hold on.
the best I can, but you'll have to be treated by a doctor as soon as we get back. I thought you were a doctor. Qualified trainee. Relax. Breathe. Why don't you tell me how you knew about this place? I used to come here with my brothers. Are you trying to distract me? <laughs> Is it working? We used to race our horses all the way from the house to here. And who would win, you or Joel? Not Joel. No. Ever since he died, it's like we're not allowed to talk about him anymore. It's like we might break if we do. People don't truly break if someone's there to help them heal. I'm done. You can relax. <sighs> so... <laughs> The debt is paid. I saved your shirt. You saved my life. Actually, you ruined my shirt. It's wrapped around your leg. So I guess I owe you. Just a few scrapes. She was lucky. Lucky you found me. It was you? Thank you. I'm so sorry. As you should be. I'll call the doctor in the morning. I know you don't agree with all of my choices as a mother in many days, neither do I. But I'm doing my best. Joel will get better if we let him. I think I've had enough of the world outside for one day. Just want to go to bed. Of course. You need some help getting up the stairs? I think I can manage. Good night. Thank you. All I care about. Well, good night. I have an early start tomorrow. No, you don't. You no longer work for me. You have more than paid your debt. From now on, your education is paid for in full. You should be lying down. I couldn't lie still if I tried. I thought you were done with the world for today. I am. That one. What we stumbled into in that storm. Words like stumble. It can never happen again. Make it sound like it was an accident. I'm your uncle. Half. Uncle. We lost ourselves. I was worried about you. I was just trying to make sure you were all right. That wasn't a worried kid. It wasn't a proper one either. You're right, um, <clears throat> then it never happened. I apologize. You're not the only one who feels sorry about it. If you want to be dancing in time for your ball, you should get some rest.
What about Christopher? Many debutantes have used their uncles for their first dance. Or fathers. It should be someone closer to her own age. And since you two have become so close, I think it's... And if I gave her that first dance... Christopher, would you do Corinne the honor? Actually, I was thinking my friend Rockford could be my first dance. Your friend? You have a male friend? Rockford tailored. And you know about this male friend of hers. Oh, Daddy, who doesn't know of the Taylors? Mr. Taylord owns the textile mills just outside of town, and his son Rockford is just a very sweet and disciplined young man who I happen to have crossed paths with at events here and there. And plus, he's just finished his first year at the Blackbird School of Business. Are you sure you want to share your first dance with a relative stranger? Rockford's not a stranger. Corinne, you do realize what you're doing here? Mother, I know why you're hesitant, but Rock's changed. You don't yet know what changes a man. He is still the same person that defiled you. Remember that. And remember what we had to do because of it. Mrs. Foxworth, a visitor for you. Uh. Mrs. Steiner, what a surprise. I'm going to make this brief, Mrs. Foxworth, since I don't much enjoy being in the company of a person like you who stains the honor of a great house like this. Problem. The Westmoreland Sanatorium. Three grand. I'll come by to collect it next weekend. Unless, of course, you want the whole world to find out that your boy is a homosexual. How does she know? The important thing is that she does, and that she's threatening to ruin our son. Joel is in the hospital trying to get better. If we don't pay her off, it will all be for nothing. <sighs> we can't have your reputation ruined. I'll arrange for the money. Don't you care for him? He's exactly what I need. The complete opposite to our overly complicated family. No one can change who they care for, not for anything in the world. What about me? Well, of course I care about you. Could you from far away? What are you talking about? I'm leaving. What? Why? You're getting better. And if I stay here, that won't happen. Not really. What about Harry?
I thought you'd still be at the office. I'm leaving. How did you get out of the hospital? I don't want anything, and I'll never bother you again. If you run, you will never be welcome back here again. I know. I will say that you are no longer my son. Well, you were never much of a father to me anyway. And I will write you out of my will. I don't want your money if it'll give me a life like yours. I'll ask you one last time. How did you get out of that hospital? It was me. I brought him home. You took him out of the sanatorium without consulting me. Wait for me. Sing him. We were breaking him. No, you already did. Just like you broke her other son. Mal's death was an accident. Was it? You are a curse on this family. You meddle and our son dies. You meddle and our other son becomes an invert. You meddle and Corinne gets pregnant. Alicia falls down the stairs. I get poisoned and now that godforsaken housekeeper has come back to blackmail me. Why? Because everything that you touch, it turns to ash. And I know you wanted that storm to take Corinne away from me. Mal died because you assaulted his fiance. Joel was tortured because you couldn't love him for who he is. Corinne fell into the arms of another man because she was running from yours. You were the curse, Malcolm. You were the storm. <laughs> Everything you touch. I went looking for it the day after they took you. Get yourself some money so you can properly get out of here. With you? On your own. Thank you for being there with me. For everything. I can't make you go through this next part with me. You deserve a life without memories of this place, and all I'll do is make you return to it over and over again. How you think about everything being with me has put you through. I have. You know, I've been kicked before. It's not the first time you push the ground. I'm, I'm not better yet, but neither are you. We get through this together, just like we got through last year. That's the point. Well, I'm not gonna throw a towel in on you just because you're scared. I got a world to see. And I got you to see it with. Well, where should we start then? New York, if it's with you. I was thinking just north. <laughs> I wish I could force him to hand over your trust right now. This is more than enough. Just promise me you'll live with no regrets. Only if you do the same. This is gonna end with someone dying. Get out of this place.
Mr. Foxworth, a pleasure to work together again after all these years. I'm assuming. Mrs. Stano, what you fail to understand about threatening my name is I no longer have a son. So you can blab to whomever you'd like. Very well. <laughs> I can only imagine how important tonight's party must be to you. I hope it goes off without a hitch. Daddy, where is my dress? It was supposed to arrive yesterday. I have bad news, my darling. Your mother... Ruined it. Ruined? How? Don't you worry. Because I have one last surprise for your big night. Tell me what you did with the dress, but don't worry, I'm not mad at you. Well, I had it fixed. Daddy said I can wear one of grandmother's dresses instead. You brought that down from the attic. This is our daughter's night. Incredible. Stunning. You're a vision. No one will be able to tear their eyes from you. You're right. Nothing must distract from my career. Not tonight. Take this back upstairs. Go on now. You sure you know exactly how to do it? I think the timing will be important. You just calm down and have yourself a good time. I know how to talk to your father. And we'll show him how great we are on the dance floor. Mrs. Steiner, I thought you and Mr. Foxworth had come to an understanding, lest there be any confusion. You are not welcome here. We did. 
about your son. But I'm not here about him. I'm here about your daughter. Or should I say, Mrs. Alicia Hawksworth's daughter. If this gets out, it'll stain your life forever. Everything you've worked so hard to build will come to pieces. But something tells me you're more worried about what will happen to her. You don't want her to know who she is, do you? Oh, hello again, Mrs. Steiner. Miss Foxworth. Erin, where is your father? I haven't seen him since the guests arrived. I hope you enjoy yourself. Oh, I intend to. Right this way. Oh, Mr. Foxworth, sir. I've been looking for you. Mr. Taylor. I have something very important to discuss with you, sir. Uh, I, I would like to ask for your daughter's hand in marriage. Let's discuss this in private, shall we? Yeah, sure. A gesture of settling this amicably. I've learned through the years that this is one of the best places for delicate conversations like these. It's how I even kept some conversations from you. did you hear about such awful rumors? Dr. Curtis keeps detail to the house to look at a pregnant woman who fell down the stairs, for example, where he recorded the woman's delusional rantings for being kept prisoner. Dr. Curtis doesn't suspect anything, does he? Oh, don't worry. <laughs> He's a bit thick. <laughs> but the real tip of the scale, Mrs. Hawksworth, I mean, Look at your daughter, then look at you. She's gorgeous, and you're a monster. Three thousand, then. Five. I'll get your money. Darling, not now. I have something very important I need to discuss with your father. But I can't find Rockford anywhere, and the first dance is about to begin. Christopher, thank goodness. Would you be so kind? It would be my honor. We have a problem. Not now. Not doing Corinne's first dance. Do you have any regrets? Thank you. Yes. I've never been so proud of you in all my life. And you look... Has Rockford spoken to you tonight? He made his intentions clear. And I made mine clearer. Did you hurt him? Daddy, what did you do? He won't bother you again. He abandoned me tonight, Corinne. And I will never abandon you. Because you... Belong to me.
Corinne, you were incredible, but I really must speak with your father. Rockford asked Daddy for permission to marry me, and he scared him away or, or hurt him or just, please. Mother, you have to talk to him. Do you love him? Rockford? Yes. You don't really? You think you do? You really think you do, but you don't. He's just a door to a life you think you want, but trust me, behind it is no life at all. How could he be sure? I can see in your eyes you're not in love with him. But when you really know, when you find someone you really love, I will support you no matter what. This was supposed to be my night. Mrs. Steiner is here. I've locked her in the library. Knows about what? You're an animal. I apologize for resorting to these methods, but you left me no choice. Wild animal. I had to find my husband. He's on his way now with your money, I can assure you. Exactly how do you expect me to trust you after you kept me locked in that closet for an hour? And what's to stop me from going out there right now to make a little toast of my own? Just know, Mrs. Steiner, what you seek to destroy, it's all I have. A life built on lies. Maybe. But it's all I could manage, given the circumstances. Everything I've done, every choice I've made, good, bad, or somewhere in between, it's all been for my children. Corinne is not your child. She may not be of my flesh, but she is of my heart. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think you're fooling? People talk. Everyone knows that deep down you're jealous of Corinne for her beauty for her charm, for the fact that she'll have love in her life, unlike you. What do you know about love? Do you think Garland ever loved you in return? Oh, my apologies. You knew him as Mr. Foxworth, and he knew you as the woman who cleaned his chamber pot. How dare you? This is my house. I'll dare to do as I please. I think I'll go find Mr. Foxworth on my own. She was going to tell everyone. We have to call the doctor. Shall we?
Oh. Sorry. <clears throat> what are you doing? Uh, never mind. It's none of my business. Enjoy the rest of your evening. The engagement's off. I'm not really sure it was ever really on, but... I'm sorry. Are you? Hard to make it work. To move on, to forget about. But fighting what I feel inside has become more difficult than facing it. You. Stop. You're what I feel inside. Please. You're what I want. You're who I love. Do you love me? Of course I love you. So what do we do now? Keeping up an illusion is hard work. Back-breaking work. Heartbreaking work. Teamwork. At breakfast, you want to kill your husband? By bedtime? But something keeps you going through it. The thought that all of the blood and dirt and lies will be worth it. That in the end, because of everything I did, their lives will be better than mine. My children. Joel got out of Foxworth Hall alive. Surely Corinne could too. But I was learning the hard way that my home had too many doors. Old ones, new ones. Find each a place to hide. That night, each and every one of Foxworth Hall's doors would fly open. And there would be no hiding anymore. <laughs> 